Hello everybody, I still owe you an Instagram live on how to torque incisors with aligners. I struggle a lot with it, so I'm happy to show you ways on how to do it. Um, thank you everybody for joining. I really love to see this community of support and where we yeah, encourage each other. So um, let's get started. How to achieve lingual root torque using aligners. Um, here in this picture, you see an incisor torque that was actually achieved with aligners. In total, it was 20 degrees of lingual root torque achieved with aligners. For a long time, I didn't believe that was possible because I failed so many times. That was back when I used different aligner brands than what I use now. Today, I use Spark aligners. I'm sure it works with other aligners as well, so please give me feedback. But what I would get if I planned lingual root torque in incisors, the aligners would just stop fitting. So they would um, create little spaces between incisal edge and the aligner would form and the patients would have difficulty sp uh, speaking. So we needed to do a refinement scan right in the middle of treatment because um, continuation was not possible anymore. Um, to make my Instagram account more uh, easy to find important stuff and helpful stuff, I moved all the webinars and the free videos, the, the longer versions of recordings to my YouTube channel. So make sure you check out my YouTube channel and subscribe so you get notified when I upload new stuff. Okay, um, here is another example of torqued incisors. So that was not a one hit wonder. Uh, I'm doing that on a regular basis now. So we're going to talk about how to avoid retroinclined incisors. It happened to me a lot. However, there are good solutions. And why is it important? So it is important because of, first of all, the function. So if the interincisal angle is very steep, if it's like 180 degrees, it should be 130 degrees because then the function is ideal and incisors can protrude and guide the movement of the jaw properly. If the angle is too steep, there is a lot of force on the incisors and it will result in premature wear, meaning that we have excessive wear in, for example, lower incisors with the dentin showing, even in very young patients. And of course, we want to set our patients up for good aging, good health. So this is one, something we want to take care of. Also aesthetics, uh, we need to think that our teeth are like our eyes, they reflect the light. So they are a beautiful asset in our face and depending on the angle, the appearance of the teeth change and also the way to reflect the light. Um, another important thing is the phonation. So the S is formed when the incisors form a little gap between each other where the airflow goes through and the, this is how we pronounce S. And if the, the bite is not working properly, if the teeth are in a weird position, then the S sounds differently or it's different, difficult for people to pronounce that sound correctly. Lingual root torque is definitely one of the most challenges, challenging movements we can plan because the aligner is only touching the crown and we need to apply the force at the level of the root. So we want to move the root by having an aligner cover the crown. That also means the longer the crown, the better it will work. So if we have a very short clinical crown and a huge long root, it will be very, very difficult. And probably this is also um, why I failed a lot when I used power ridges to achieve the lingual root torque, because what is the crucial aspect in achieving success is the contact of the aligner with the tooth. And with the power ridges, I noticed that yes, it's supposed to be a pressure point, but actually the aligner is only touching the tooth in one area. Also, the patients have difficulties with sliding the lip um, over the aligner because it really sticks out. So 
so I didn't like them at all. Um, Disclaimer, I'm a speaker for Sparkle Liners. However, what I noticed as a clinician is that the engagement of the liner with the tube is really good because the, the models on which the, the liners are sucked down are printed with higher resolution. So that means the liners are less visible for the patient. They're more comfortable. And for several reasons, I get more precise out outcome for Sparkle Liners. So torque is very difficult. Um, this is an example. This is actually the example of the, extra, the superimposition that you saw at the beginning. And it cannot be overlooked that those incisors are extremely retro-inclined. How that looks in the bone is that the root is actually completely against the cortical plate. And what we want is that the root is embedded in the basal bone. Okay, we have some bone there and the root is supposed to be right in the middle, not in the extremes. Because we want healthy distribution of the forces into the bone. And um, this is probably the best way to um, direct the forces into the skull. So we started at an um, incisor angulation of almost 80 degrees, it's supposed to be around 110. Um, and yeah, we already, uh, I already showed you that, how that looks like. So what I wanted to achieve here was 28 degrees of root torque. Let me just show you that here. Sorry, I cannot do it. But um, yeah, here we have 30 degrees of lingual root torque that was planned here. Very, very challenging. And just to show you that it's working, um, we started out with 80 degrees of incisor inclination. And now we're not done yet, but we're in, in treatment. I think it's very impressive, so it's worth showing. We're already at 100. So we're still a little bit retro inclined, but honestly, I think this is a huge, huge improvement. 20 degrees of lingual root torque with the liners. Here is the superimposition. So um, it was not, the change in torque was not done by proclination of the crown which would be very easy. It was done by um, lingual root torque and um, yeah, torquing the root. What I used to use to fix those kind of problems was to apply the retroclined pattern. So if you ask your designer, your technician to do the retroclined pattern, usually what you would get is starting with a retro inclined incisor position they would first procline only the crown and then do a bodily retraction the idea behind that is that you turn a very difficult movement with the liners namely lingual root torque into two rather easy movements which is proclination of the crown very easy very predictable and then bodily movement backward retraction. The disadvantage is it takes a lot of time, gaps open up between incisors, which is um, not so pleasing for the patient. And um, yeah, those are the main disadvantages. Um, so what I'm doing now, because at some point I figured out I can plant lingual root torque from the beginning and I will not get a misfit of aligners is that I simply do it. I plan lingual root torque from the beginning. And this is how this looks like. So I'm applying lingual root torque right from the start. And this is how you communicate it to, to, to your technician. If the simulation doesn't look like that, please apply lingual root torque from the beginning. This is also why I like the approval software from Sparkle Liner so much because you see the roots and it's not about seeing the anatomical root. I'm not so interested in the anatomy, but it's rather here to help me assess 
the inclination of the tooth and which tooth movement is involved to get into the final position. So here, root torque is involved. There is something, um, there's one thing you should consider. So here I'm extending the aligner into the recession on purpose because this will help me deliver the forces to the root. It will help me get better control over the root movement. If that patient had very, very small clinical crowns and very long roots, this movement would be extremely difficult. This is probably the only reason where I would still use a retroclined pattern. But in a case like that, that's ideal, just to apply lingual root torque from the beginning. And please note that this is an adult patient, so um, even more difficult because the bone in adults is more mineralized, the rate of mineralization is higher, so more resistance, but it still worked out well. Um, I would like to show you the, the clinical picture of that. So this is how we started. We're right in between treatments, so I cannot show you a CEF uh, just yet. But I think it's obvious how we achieved lingual root torque in that case. And you can tell that it's not just proclination of the crown, because otherwise you would see a huge overjet. But actually, she started in a class two and is now in a class one. And this probably will pose another question in your, in your head. Class two elastics are counterproductive for lingual root torque. They work against that movement. So in cases where I know I'm going to use a lot of class two elastics, I will plan some extra lingual root torque. So I would do an overcorrection of the lingual root torque to compensate for what will be lost due to the use of class two elastics. So here you can compare it with the approval software. This was the beginning and this is the progress. So this is the stage in the aligner um, simulation and below is the progress in the corresponding stage. So I think the expression is quite good. Maybe not 100%, but I would say up to 80 or 90% expression. Here's how you can do it in your cases. So I recommend, especially if you're using spark aligners, I've found that it works really well to plan lingual root torque right from the beginning and check if it looks like that, if they plan lingual root torque right from the beginning. Um, here's another great tip. Add 10 to 20 degrees of extra lingual root torque, meaning this is the initial tooth position. This is how the inclination of upper incisors would be ideal. So let's say that would be 110 degrees to SN line. And then you add another 10 degrees of lingual root torque. I would not go beyond more than 20 degrees of extra lingual root torque because if we do crazy overcorrections, this is when things tend to get out of control. If you need more, plan your 10 to 20 degrees of lingual root torque, then do a refinement and add some more lingual root torque. Don't go crazy and try to solve everything just in one set of aligners, in, in one uh, clinching, in one approver. Uh, it's likely to fail. Here is another example where we're also still in treatment, but I think the change in torque is remarkable. Uh, you can tell it's not a proclination just of crowns, which would be very easy because we didn't get a lot of overjet. Um, it's lingual root torque performed with aligners. Um, this video also will go to my YouTube channel, so please um, subscribe so you get notifications when I upload new stuff. Thank you for joining and I would like to answer some questions if you have some. So um, here are some. Um, let me just make a um, black space here so that I can 
actually see your questions. Okay. Can you use buttons instead of precision cuts for class two elastics? Will that help with the lingual root torque? That's a great question. Thank you so much. Yes, you can. Uh, it will have less um, bad effects, side effects on the inclination of upper incisors. You, because you will also get a little bit of extrusive force on the tooth where you get the where you have the button, but still, um, it is counterproductive. But yes, um, definitely, if you don't want to sabotage the lingual root torque, it's probably best to use buttons instead of precision cuts. Um, there were some more questions. Your lecture is incredible. Thank you. Is there any possibility to get a video reviewing later. Um, I'm happy to announce that I'm now again able to offer clinical support. So if anybody of you wants me to review your case, there is an option for that. Um, the website is currently under construction, but if you just direct message me, um, that works for now. In the future, in a few weeks, I will have a website where you can book a slot and then we go over your case. Great video. Can you clarify when to plan lingual root torque from the beginning and when to apply virtual client pattern in class two diff two cases, adult cases? So I started with using the retro client pattern um, and how I discovered that I can do lingual root torque right from the beginning is that I had a lot of cases where I ended up with retro retroinclined incisors and I couldn't go through the retroclined pattern again because that would mean a year of treatment for the patient. So I had to plan lingual root torque right from the beginning. And then I saw, oh my God, it worked. So this is why I use that right now all the time. Here's my tip. I would do, I would plan it right from the beginning. Um, let's say if you have normal, a normal length of a clinical crown. And if you see that it's not, the teeth are not tracking well, then advise the patient to wear the aligners two weeks instead of only um, seven days. And you can also advise them to do bite exercises, meaning you give them a little chewy or a little, you know, stick from the section and they're supposed to bite on that with incisors so that the aligner is really nicely pushed on the teeth. Um, I, I recommend the um, patients to do 60 repetitions. So one repetition is biting on that chewy for one second as hard as possible. 60 repetitions, six times a day. That also helps with intrusion of incisors because usually we have a class two, diff two, they're also um, over erupted the incisors. So that serves two purposes. I would not do lingual root torque right from the beginning if I have really small clinical crowns in an adult patient. Do you use power ridge on the liner on such cases? I find that the liner fit with ridges is not as well and always end up with the liner being not fitted properly, properly on teeth with ridges placed. I 100% agree with you. On top of that, the patient also is really bothered by the lip not sliding over their liner. I do not ever use power ridges. Um, thank you for your questions. I want to look at those who were stated earlier. Um, yeah. Let me see. Um, please feel free to ask questions in the meantime. Is there any possibility? Yeah, we had that. Um, so my videos will go to YouTube later. Yeah, okay. I don't think there are any more questions. If you do have some and I couldn't answer them now, write me a direct message and I will do my best to answer. Thank you all for joining and for your support.